The new Mantis X10 Fire Amp's performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Hey guys, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra channel. We're doing our dry fire drills and skills. Uh, we've been working our way through the Mantis and the things that it asks you to do, which is a very good list for anybody who's interested in being a better shooter. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about reloads. Reloads fill a very unique uh, spot in the self-defense world because, uh, especially if you follow John's work closely, uh, reloads don't happen for the armed citizen. Um, they're just not significant. There's no, no numbers that out affect the outcome of the fight. But if you shoot, you'll have to reload your gun. So we have to have some skills at it. Um, there are three times that I have to reload my gun uh, when I'm competing. Uh, I have to do what's called a speed reload. Um, when I'm shooting in a class, or a classifier or a qualification, I have to do what's called an emergency slide lock reload or out of battery reload. And then the final one is, I do this in class quite frequently when I'm teaching or taking class, is I do a reload with retention and that simply prepares the gun to be ready to go. But when you look at the Manus, you may be confused how to practice these. If you see, I've put uh, a desk in front of me and I've made kind of a nest with a sweatshirt here. So when the magazine falls, I can just pick it up. It prevents me from having to bend over and over and, and do it over and over, because that can be really tiresome with your reloads. I'm gonna give you some good ideas how to improve your reload. The thing I like about teaching reloads is not necessarily the skill is significant, but it does teach us to follow through. It teaches us to stay in the process. You have to do a lot of things well at once. Uh, you have to be able to get your hand off the gun, manipulate two, do a one-handed clear with your shirt, get the magazine, put them together, attain a firing grip, and then be ready to fire another accurate shot. Uh, I was told early in my career that the most two most missed shots are the first one from the draw and the first one from a reload. And in my class, I've seen nothing to dissuade me of that because people get into very quick hand skills and then check out on the other processes of the basic fundamentals of marksmanship. You want to position the gun and, so that it's ready to accept the magazine. So uh, I've, I'm reloading my SIG today, which is much more difficult because it has a metal inside rim. It may be beveled slightly, but it also has a metal magazine lip that they can catch and make it more difficult. So I have to have extreme accuracy in my reloads. Uh, for me, the reloading process, when I activate the magazine release, I turn the gun from where the magazine's going to come from, and I line the gun up with the magazine. Now notice I've kept it up uh, in front of me, but my visual shift will be to loading the magazine, just like it is to the front sight, because I've decided this is more important than anything right now. I need to get it back in the fight. I need to get ready to shoot, so I want to have an accurate reload. If I keep my vision downrange the whole time, then I may miss the reload, so I can see what's about to happen, but I can't continue the fight. So just like you shift to a front sight right here, you shift just, just a second. This is a great drill. Uh, these are called Burkett reloads. Uh, Matt Burkett was the burner, really fast shooter. One of the first videos that we had of people shooting. And he just practiced putting just the tip of the magazine in each time. Uh, and it's a really good drill to get that motion of where everything comes together. I really don't want to reload down here. Okay, I'm really out of the fight. Even if I'm looking up, it's really hard to do that. So find a place. Some people like to index the elbow. Uh, for me, that's not correct. I rotate the gun too much and I miss the reload. So I have really long arms, so I just turn the magazine well to the thing that's going to feed it and then put the bullets straight in it. And that'll get my efficiency in it. If you think about the actual draw of the magazine, it is a one-handed draw with your left hand. Now we all know that the other hand uh, is not as coordinated, it doesn't have as fine a skill, so we really have to practice a little bit. I do the circular, I come back with the index finger and I pull it out. Uh, Concealed reloads are significantly harder than uh, open reloads. Even with a vest covering it is much easier. This is a very difficult way to reload, and I see a significant difference on times, which we'll discuss. Um, remember, it's always better to keep your posture up and your head up. So while we're doing this, we want to stand with good posture, we want to have good stance, and simply as I do it quickly, I just want to shift my vision for that second to see the mag go in, and then I'm going to go right back to the target. There was, uh, it, it surprises me in, in the firearms industry, there's still the belief that if your heart rate gets to a certain level, you can no longer use fine motor skills. Uh, I am a mixed martial arts coach, I've, uh, and that's probably one of the highest heart rates levels during a match. You'll see even resting heart rates before they go into the fight. We r routinely see resting heart rates of fighters at 120 uh, and before the fight because of the nerves. Your coordination does not diminish. 
Uh, the real hypocrisy in, in that idea is that when we're working with a firearm like this, that I can do a fine motor skill with my finger, I can do a fine motor skill with my thumb, but I'm simply unable to do it with the other hand. And it doesn't make sense to me, so one hand can do it, one hand can't. It's a matter of training. It needs to be unconsciously competent, so you don't have to think about it. If you're not very good at it, it's going to fall apart. So remember, your heart rate's not going to affect you that way. Um, you will have more physical shake, you'll have a higher respiration, and you'll need to focus clearly, but you can still perform at a very high level. You know, jiu-jitsu moves at high levels are very complicated compared to firearm manipulation, but people are still able to do it. So don't let that stop you, but practice is essential. Let's talk about how to get to all this. All right, so I have my magazine set up. They have safety rounds in them, okay, because that's what I need to practice this particular skill set. Uh, the Manus will go on the gun and not the magazine, so, you know, if you have the Picatinny rail, on the gun instead of the magazine, that's where you want the manis to go because it's going to measure it. But you can also do it with a part timer. Just set a part timer and try to get it. Okay, let's talk about from here. My hand, my right hand is going to probably have to break a little bit of the grip of the gun to press that button, or I'm going to use my left hand on the way out to drop that magazine. Pretty cool skill. So I'm lucky, I've got big hands. I can manipulate the magazine button without moving my hand. Some of you may not be able to do that, so you may experiment and either use your left hand on the way out and then go get the other magazine and get your reload, okay? or you can shift the gun slightly in your hand and use it. Uh, it will vary between shooters, so it's really important that you think about that and figure out which one works best for you. Um, you know, the left hand is really simple to learn, and then if you're using a paddle, you can do the same thing, whether it's a button or a paddle. Three types of reloads we're going to work on here. Okay, the first one is called an in-battery reload. So I've been shooting the gun like this. It's still loaded, and I just simply want to get a, a new magazine in it. Um, when I'm carrying, I carry an extra magazine, basically in case my magazine malfunctions or there's a problem with it. Uh, that's a good way to think about it, and I like the way it balances my belt out. I've been doing it my whole life. If you don't carry an extra mag, that's fine too. You have to make the decisions, but uh, really, it's not a big thing to carry. It's pretty small, it's pretty light, and it, it could be useful or not. We don't know. So if it's in battery, I've been shooting and the gun is still loaded, so I simply drop the magazine straight down. Don't turn your gun first because then the magazine doesn't come out, especially with Glock shooters. It's really hard to get that magazine out. You end up doing this trying to get it out. So keep the gun in a vertical position. Push the button, magazine falls, the other one comes up, goes right in. I've used my index finger to line it up. I shifted my vision, put it back in, and now I'm ready to shoot again. So that's an in battery reload. The Manus measures that. We also call it a speed reload. Okay? Now, there's a group of tactical people in the world that if you drop bullets on the ground from a fresh magazine, they get really upset. That comes from a different part of shooting and not as so much for the armed citizen because we know the reload doesn't happen very often. Um, don't lose your mind if the drill calls for you to drop something on the ground. Okay? You're going to be okay. Uh, I carry a 15 round magazine with one in the gun and a 20 round magazine as a spare so I have 36 rounds means I could fire at least six I could fire six bill drills continuously it's a significant amount of ammo and if I decided I needed to reload gu the gun in a hurry and I had time that would be my my choice to do it if you don't like to drop that then you shoot until the gun's empty and as you know if you get your hands in the proper part of the gun and you don't ride the slide stop or release that the gun locks back like this. And some people it's not going to because you're going to get your thumbs on it. SIG's very difficult and HK to keep your thumb off that so it won't lock open. So you'll press the trigger again and get a click and then you have to fix it. So if I see the gun open up like this, I simply have to get ready to reload it. So I've got the empty mag here, same process. I let go, comes back up, and now it's back in battery and ready to shoot. Very easy to do, okay? The hard part is manipulating the gun and locking the slide open. You've got to practice that okay, over and over. So that's an out of battery or an emergency slide lock reload. These dummy rounds are essential for this because they make the gun operate. Now let's talk about how we operate the controls. There's two ways. When I put the magazine in, I can simply come and go overhand. I could go to the pinch method. I could use my left hand to operate the slide release, or I could operate it with my right hand if it's big enough. There are advantages and disadvantages to all of them. Um, by far, the quickest is riding it with your thumb and then putting the magazine in it. But if you tend to push down even a little early, then you load the gun and it's empty. So you've got to really practice that one if that's your choice. If that's not your choice and you want to do it with your left hand, what happens is as I finish the reload, 
I just have an index point where my palm stays, my thumb comes forward, and then just simply touches that and loads the gun. I'm ready in a firing grip and I can go straight out. If you don't practice a lot, uh, the overhand method is probably the most robust, uh, although it doesn't work with all firearm platforms. It's not particularly good with like the Beretta um, 92. So we have to be careful with that. But what a lot of people do is they simply reload the gun like this, break the hand to the top, come over the top, push and pull, reload and come back. It will cost you about a half a second. That's the difference between this and this is half a second. It's time, it's significance, but you, you're, you have to decide which one you can do. If you don't have a lot of practice, you know, the malfunction drill like this and the reloading drill like this works the same way, so it'll save you some time. So look at your schedule, realize how much you're going to spend practice on this, and then try to pick something that's, that's good for you. The last one is what we call a tack reload or a reload with retention. Um, if you shoot IDPA, this used to be a big thing. Uh, I use it in class constantly to get the gun back into the loaded position. So right here, I, I, I've done shooting. And as Tom Givens says, a, a, happy, a full gun is a happy gun. So I want to get it back ready to shoot again. But it still has bullets in it. So instead of dropping something on the ground, I go and get this. I put it in between my piece fingers, my index, and my middle finger. And then I drop it in the other hand, switch it back. Make sure I keep the muzzle in the correct place and then have a good place to put it. I can put it back in my mag carrier, but I tend to put it back in my back pocket unless I don't have another magazine because it's I know it's depleted right now and I've retained those rounds. Now for me, this is an after action technique. It means the fight's over and that's when I've done it. Or I have a break in the fight and I know I need to retain those, those rounds. So it's a, it's a choice for you guys to work on. Another way to do the same thing is you, let me set this back up here. Okay, I can simply take the magazine out on the way down, put it in my pocket, come back up, put it in the gun. It's a great technique too. One has the gun unloaded for longer, the last one, and the previous one between the fingers loads the gun sooner but keeps the left hand busy. It's a compromise, right guys? So you've got to figure out which one works. I would pick one and stick with it and be good at it. Some people stow it in their belt line, that works great too. So the reload with retention, this way is I release the magazine, I put it in a safe place, I come back and get the other one, and I load the gun, and I'm ready to go again. Remember the first one is a little more complicated physically. You've got to have, uh, Claude Warner said a statement to me that has really affected me, and he didn't mean to, but teachers do that. He said he had clever hands, and I thought, what a great way to describe this. We always worry about the speed, but you need to be clever. Clever, think about that word, how can I get these things done? In the amount of time. We'll look at the time signatures so you know. So once again, here's the first one. I go and get the fresh magazine. I put it between those fingers. I pinch the magazine out. I press the other one in and then I put this some someplace safe and get back to the fight. Fight's probably over so I'm going to work back and holster the firearm. So if you're working on a hot range, it's very useful because your gun's always loaded and you don't have to mess with it. You can do it while it's out. So those are the three. Uh, we have in battery, out of battery, and then a tactical reload. None of us agree on the terminology. We all use different terminology, which is incredibly confusing for new gun owners. That's okay. You may hear it referred to something different, like a speed reload or uh, emergency slide lock reload or a, a reload with retention. Just recognize they're the whole same, the same thing. Manus does a good job of explaining it to you. Uh, so let's talk about what happens with our practice on it. Uh, there's going to be some time signatures. I, of course, did the practice so you don't have to watch me too much. Uh, my tack reloads were about uh, five seconds. It takes five seconds to do the tack reload. That's the last one we did. That's the one with retention. Okay, uh, Five seconds, and then it also measures the press of the trigger afterwards, so I had a 95 on it, which is good. Problem is, once you're doing these things fast, you tend to press it off quickly. Uh, don't rush, try, or hurry in these situations. Just do what you need to do. So let me set this up so you guys can see. So if I was on the clock, I simply start with the gun out and I'm ready. And as soon as I hear the beeper, I release, I go get the other magazine and put it back in. Now that's a speed reload, okay? That's really quick. Let's talk about that reload with retention, okay? So now I go to here, I get this, I trade them out, try not to be fumbly, put it back together and I'm back in the fight. So that's almost double what a speed load is. So that was about five seconds or 5.4 was more my average. Uh, reload in battery, uh, right at about three seconds, two and a half to three seconds. 
Uh, remember, I'm doing it from concealment. And I have a race rig over here. If I put that on, I'm really fast with it, and I can get reloads significantly faster because I just have to do that. But with this, I have to clear, go back, and get it. So I need to be well versed in like a single hand reload here and make sure that I'm getting the cover garment out, getting a good grip, and getting it back into the gun. Uh, my average score on that was a 90. So maybe I'm hurrying a little bit right there on that trigger press, getting it back in. All right, but it did only take me two and a half seconds with the speed reload. Emergency slide lock reload, the difference is it's about 2.75 to three and a quarter. So it takes me a quarter of a second to, to either go overhand or work the button. Um, this one you'll see the biggest problem with your shooting skills uh, if you're not careful because as you manipulate the gun here, what happens is whichever way you do it, say I do an overhand method, so I drive it home and I come back, I was riding the slide there, if I come back and I put it in this way and I reach for this, then I have to put my hands together. And, and as soon as the hands come together, what do you want to do? You want to shoot. When I do that too, I see the dot bounce everywhere. So I need to be significantly careful there. And remember, it takes the amount of time it takes. So as I go from here to here, build your grip and then gently press the trigger and you'll be in, in better shape. Uh, my, my scores are around 90 on that. So I'm getting some information. I need to slow down just a little bit on my emergency slide lock reloads. But that's the one that you feel pressure because your gun's empty and you got to get it reloaded as quickly as you can. Uh, on the FBI drill, they give you eight seconds to draw the firearm, fire four shots, reload, and fire four more shots. That's tough for most people. Uh, if your draw is two seconds or less, um, there's your first two seconds, so you've lost 25% of the drill. You have to fire four shots. You can do it at a half second or a quarter second. If it's a half second, it takes you two seconds. And if it's a quarter second, it takes you one second. And then the reload three seconds, two and a half seconds to do an emergency slide reload, and then fire four more shots. So that's a tough drill. Uh, I recently took a class where I had to do that drill with a revolver. Um, revolver reloads are really difficult. They take extensive practice and it's very fumbly. There are a lot of actions and I'm not going to go into it, but an eight second reload is smoking fast on a revolver. So most people that carry a revolver for self-defense, if they feel like they need a reload, it's just simply easier to carry another revolver. Uh, because the cylinder is the biggest part of the revolver, and whatever reload mechanism you have usually takes up a lot of space like that, unless you're going to do singles, which is really slow. It takes a lot of time. It can be done, but you're really going to have to practice. So maybe an extra gun on that. I, I'm not going to go into the reloads for the revolvers in great detail, but if there's enough interest, we can go through it. But it's, it's difficult. So realize, self-defense wise, the, re the reloads are not significantly important, but they are important for your shooting. Okay? So that covers our, our technical skills. Uh, to talk about the Manus just a bit, um, you'll get the same diagrams that you usually get. You're going to see where the muzzle tracks. All right? You're going to see a lot of movement compared to your draw because we are turning and moving the gun. So that is tracking where it goes, and then we want to see it get back into position. So it's really helpful in that. Now, if you don't have the Manus X, you just set up a par timer, uh, give yourself a beep, you know, start at five seconds and start working yourself your way down. There are some USPSA Grandmasters that can do sub one second reloads um, out of their belt. And that's really cool. We love to see that on the Instagram, but I would like you to practice to be uh, trustworthy with your reloads. I like the draw and the reload to be trustworthy. So at whatever pace I'm going to do it, I just want to be able to do it smoothly. And that's how we practice it over and over again. So let's look at it one time before we go. Okay, if I'm practicing here, I've got done shooting, I've decided to reload, I let the magazine out, I load the other one and get my hands back on the gun. Don't rush, try or hurry. Make sure it's vertical and get back to it. Uh, pleasure as always. Hope all you're doing well. Hope you're getting out on a range practicing. Hope you're doing your dry practice at home. Let me know your comments. I'm sure something I missed in there that I didn't go over. Uh, I put everything on the board, that's why I keep glancing over here. This is a difficult subject because there's three parts of it, but hopefully you know how to do it now. Um, if anything, the most essential one for all of us to practice is the out of battery or the emergency slide lock reload. That's the one you're going to have to do uh, when it really counts. The tack reload is really useful for administrative handling of the gun. The fight's over and I decide to fill up the gun and get it back ready and then I'm going to put the gun away. That's really useful. The speed reload, you know, that's more for USPSA. You know, you've planned out a stage, you're going to drop it and move to the next place. But sometimes you'll shoot skills where you just feel like it would be better to reload the gun in a hurry. Remember the difference between the emergency and the speed reload was about a quarter of a second. 
Funny how that time keeps coming up. So you're only saving a quarter of a second. It's very quick, but you know maybe we need to shoot the gun until we reload it uh, as self-defenders. You know the armed citizen's goal is what to break contact, to get home, to get away from the bad guy. Um, you know it's not like law enforcement. We don't have to go and arrest the guy. It's not like the military. We're not seeking to get close to them and destroy the enemy. We're we're seeking to get home. So any reload we do. As we know with John's work, doesn't happen very often, but we got to practice it for the range so we can keep the gun shooting and be good at that part of it. Stay in the process, work on your follow-through. I use it in my class exclusively to teach follow-through with people because it's moments of changing the hand position and going from administrative to shooting skills that shows who you are. Uh, and then you can extend that level of concentration. You have to change sp skills a lot because this hand's fast, then it goes slow, then build the grip, then press the trigger to the rear. Think about how all that works together. Work on it, and I look forward to hearing your feedback, guys. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant, and you can look me up online. Tag me if you want me to answer questions. I have to otherwise just check the website constantly. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. And then, of course, uh, Active Self-Protection monitors it, and they'll help you also. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you on the range soon.